In this video, we're going to talk about here documents, which are a way that we can work with large chunks of text at once in a bash script. So we'll start off. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, di we'll display the contents of a here document. And we'll use cat to do that. And that'll be our first example. So the, the general structure of a here document, we're going to have some command and then we'll have this redirection and then we'll have some sort of delimiter. Then we'll have some text, maybe some more text. And then finally the delimiter and that'll indicate that we've reached the end of the here document. So if I want to use cat to display some text, and I'll use cat example as the delimiter, it doesn't matter what that is, it can be any string. I'll copy some data, and then now that I have my text, I need to put my delimiter there. And one thing you'll notice is that the, the syntax highlighting, if you're using Vim or any other editor that does syntax highlighting for shell scripts, you'll see that it knows that that's a here document and it'll actually give you some syntax highlighting, which is helpful because I would certainly like to get back the time I've wasted debugging scripts with here documents that didn't have the correct or have the delimiters spelled the same. So now let's also pass a here document as input to the word count command. And I'm going to take the same document we had above. And so I'll say word count and I'll call this, I'll just, I'll use the, the word end here. And that'll pass the output or, or that'll pass this into the word count command. So let's get this to run and I'll use 774 permissions. And so you can see I have the execute bit set for me. So that's what I want to see. If I run this, there's my first here document. And then you can see here's the output of the word count command. This is going to be similar to this cat example. So I'm actually going to copy that code. And notice I'm using these echo statements also as the comment. I'm not going to put comments because they're not, they wouldn't really add anything. So here's the, the example from before, and I can actually redirect that to a file. Now, if I run my script, if I cat output dot text, there you can see that output. And I guess what I'll do is just so that these all don't look the same, I'll say, cat example, WC example, and I'll put to a file example. Again, whatever command I use, this redirection is basically putting these characters as input to that command. So let's set up some variables and I'm going to set up, uh, we'll say the message is hello and let's be kind so we'll say we'll use username there and the username will be who am i so we have this command here and are these uh, variables that we've set so let's dynamically create the here document content. So we're going to cat and we'll use end of line here. So there's my here document. And you'll notice I didn't capitalize them both. So I didn't know what to do with that. So here I'm going to echo the message. I'm going to echo the date date. And I'll put some text in here. So 
So if I run this, you'll see that it did not display this stuff. So let's um, there we go. So it looks like it didn't save. Looks like we have some bugs. So on 38. Okay, so this is a tricky error. I have the dollar sign there, and I don't want the dollar sign because I'm actually creating the variable here, doing the assignment. I'm not using the variable. So now if I run this, it should run as the way I would expect. And you'll notice it says, hello, W. Huber, and here's the date. I guess this, this echo is kind of dumb. So let's take that out. And let's run it again. Yeah, so that looks uh, really good. Notice this here document gets dynamically filled with whatever the shell substitution would be. Now that's not always desirable. So now I want to do this where this doesn't expand it. So I'm going to suppress expansion in the here document content. So same exact stuff as we had before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to quote the delimiter. And you'll notice as soon as I did that, all of this went to the same color because it's no longer dynamic content, right? You see, so there, message and date, the syntax highlighter knows that that's a message, that that's a variable that's going to get replaced. It knows date is a command that's going to get executed. But as soon as I add that second quote, I've put EOL in quotes. So now it says suppress whatever you were planning to do there. Another example, I think this will be the last one we do. Suppose we want to append to the end of a file. Very similar to what we did before, but now we're going to put the two greater than signs to indicate that I want to append, not just write. And we'll have something called log.txt. And I'll use log here as the delimiter, which, by the way, notice the delimiters don't have to be unique. There's, we used EOL several times there. So let's start off with, we'll have the date. Actually, let's just start off with a blank line. And then we'll have the date. And I could put this in back text. You can also surround it in parentheses with a dollar sign in the front. That'll execute that command. And then let's also get a listing of, let's say, all the C files currently in that folder. We'll end this. And if we run our script here, we're appending to the end of a file. So let's cat log.txt. And I made a mistake here. I just put echo when actually I could just do an empty line here. So let's run it again. And now if I cat that notice, here's my empty line. This is what I just added. The empty line, the date, and then a listing of all the C files in that directory.